Hi, Miranda. Thanks a lot. Const uh, construction spending may be up, but consumer spending, well, it's been pretty soft. And joining us now to talk more about the top financial stories of the day is Tom Hutchinson, senior financial editor for MoneyNews.com. Tom, always great to see you. Good to be here, John. All right, the latest numbers show that consumer spending stalled out back in April, but wages are supposed to be higher. Gas prices have actually gone down. So what's the problem here? Why are people not spending their money? Well, John, it's just not the same consumer there was uh, 10, 20 years ago uh, for a couple of big reasons. One is demographic. Uh, you know, the population is getting older beyond the uh, peak consumption years. A lot of people are behind on their retirement savings and money that normally went to a convertible or a uh, vacation is now going into uh, the IRA. Uh, so you have that problem. And number two, there's also sort of a, a hangover from the financial crisis. I mean, people took generations to get over the Great Depression, right. so they're still uh, woozy from the financial crisis. And uh, frankly, beyond that, this administration isn't giving people any reason to be confident about the future. Yeah, and you mentioned that too. Uh, we look so at for those. We look at interest rates, too, very low still, and they're going to be low for a while here. You mentioned folks putting money in their IRAs and their retirement accounts, but are Americans, instead of saving or spending their money at retail stores, are they putting that money into bank accounts or savings accounts? Yeah, uh, primarily they've been saving more, uh, which is good. Right, that's good. Uh, in the longer term. Uh, but, you know, it's, you're not going to get the same consumption levels uh, that we're used to in recoveries past. And uh, the consumer's going to buy things there's pent-up demand for, of course. Uh, but it's just not going to be the uh, consumption orgy that uh, you saw in the 80s and 90s. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's a vivid picture there. We also uh, saw the GDP dropping by 0.7% in the first quarter. When you look at also lagging consumer confidence and consumer spending, does that concern you? Well, it does. I think my picture of it is this. I think... The economy is bad, was bad in the first quarter, and the second quarter is not going to be great. Um, we had been sort of picking it up in this to a level that was good for this recovery. And it, uh, the economy sort of got walloped uh, with the repricing of commodities and the rising dollar. And it really hasn't overcome that yet, but I think in the second half, uh, the advantages of lower oil prices and, and a higher dollar will eventually seep through, and I think we'll see better performance then. All right, Tom, with about a minute left, we want to get your take. And we've been talking about this Greek debt situation. Uh, the bailout uh, is in the works now. We're hearing uh, that Germany's Chancellor Angela Merkel hosting that emergency meeting with the IMF today. Creditors say they are close to reaching a deal on this Greek bailout. Meantime, though, uh, Cyprus and the Greek uh, finance minister says we're, we're not going to take any ultimatums here. What, what ultimately happens at the end of today? Um, I, you know, I think they'll probably find a way to push it uh, into the future a little bit more. But they're leaving. There's a standoff. Uh, you know, the guy, this guy in Greece got elected uh, saying, you know, you guys are stupid. The guys before me were stupid because uh, we have so much leverage. They'll never let us leave the euro. There'll be a crisis in Europe. So we have much more leverage to get whatever we want. We can make a new deal without having to do this or this or this. Not true. Uh, Germany and the ECB have limitations on how much they'll give. And, uh, you know, it's whether Greece will blink or not at this point. All right. So we'll look forward to that blink, perhaps. Tom Hutchinson, thanks always for joining yeah. us. And to learn more about Tom's high income factor, simply go to moneynews.com slash HIF. Again, that's moneynews.com slash HIF. Tom Hutchinson, always great to see you. More coming up here on Newsmax. Now we'll take a look at the global headlines, what's making news around the world, plus a recap of an important interview with Alan Dershowitz and Michael Patrick Flanagan from Newsmax Prime just last night.